Hello everybody and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. Um, we would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are creating from and streaming from today. And we'd also like to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. We're joined today by Najiha Najla, photographer, videographer and designer from Malaysia. Najiha, how are you doing? Hi, hi Finn. Thank you so much for having me here today. And hello everyone who's watching this stream on, on, on Adobe Live. Yes, exactly. Watching on Adobe Live. Um, so we're over on behance.net slash live. That's the live chat that we're using today. So if you're over on YouTube, jump on over, say hello. Um, you can log in with your Creative Cloud account. Um, even if you have a free one, jump in, say hi. We'd love to um, hear from you. Um, but yeah, we are continuing our journey this month in the world of video editing. We hope you've got a lot out of it already so far this week. Um, and is my audio working? Yeah, my audio is working. Okay, good. <laughs> Just making sure everything's <laughs> working all right. Um, so we're here for an hour today. This is a two-part series. So we're here today. It's Tuesday and we're also going to be back on Thursday. So if you have any questions, uh, any comments, uh, any bits of advice that you might want uh, while we're hanging out, don't hesitate to throw the question in chat and we'll ask it on the stream. Um, but for those who might not be familiar with you and all the things you do, um, I always love meeting people such as yourself that have such a wide breadth of the amount of work that they do. It's like photographer, designer, videographer. Um, but then if you check out your website and all the stuff, you also do training. You're an Adobe certified instructor, um, you know, social media all over the place. Um, you're a busy <laughs> person. Like, I love it. I'm so impressed. Um, but Thank for those so who might not be familiar with you, do you want to kind of give us a little bit of the elevator pitch of who you are and what you do? Um, um, well, my name is Najia Najlab. Some people call me Naj. Um, it's easy to pronounce, I believe. <laughs> yeah, and, I probably uh, stumbled totally... across it a little bit. I try my best. <laughs> <laughs> so just like cut it short and make it simpler for everybody. It's like, uh, just call me Naj. It's cool. easier. Perfect. I'll, uh, I'll yeah. do it. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it can be like a bit of, a bit of like tongue twister sometimes to mm. pronounce my name. Um, understandable and, and no offense. Um, so technically, I am a Adobe Certified Expert and also instructor. Um, beside, uh, I'm doing photography, videography as a freelancer, graphic designing. I do have my own uh, company uh, where I do stuff for my clients and also my personal projects sometimes. Um, but nowadays, I would say I'm focusing more on doing training. So example, mm. in a month, I do have like a couple of trainings like for corporate, for private sectors and all. And when I was like have more free time, uh, I have like list of my clientele as well. So, so where I do content for them. Yeah. So um, once in a while, I'll just like jump into like doing freelancing because I do enjoy the process and living. I think that's where my passion is. I mm. do have passion passions in teaching, but I do also love creating some stuff even more. So um, yeah, I just like do a bit of both at the same time. So if you guys check out my website, I do have two kind of websites. <laughs> I have my portfolio <laughs> website, example, example. Um, if you guys like want to know me more about things that I do, my work, you guys can go to my uh, my portfolio, Adobe uh, portfolio website. Uh, I do about, have about me, uh, things that I did for, for brands, um, when I do videos, um, how I started into this industry, how I, you know, winning Adobe certified um, design championship, back then and then how I become my uh, uh, become Adobe Certified Expert Instructor and all of that. Uh, you can see like read, uh, read all of uh, about my journey on my portfolio website. And if you guys like more interested in getting the trainings or want to know what kind of trainings that I provided for people, um, I do teach um, design and also video editing training like uh, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, um, Lightroom for photography and all. So you guys can check out my another website which is nazjahnajla.com where I have a list of trainings, video courses that I put and also Adobe Certified Professional SCP courses as well. So if you guys uh, would love to learn and also uh, get the training uh, hands-on and also theoretically about uh, the Adobe software, you guys can check out this website. So yeah, I have like a like two places where I put my stuff. I don't want to like, you know, mix it up and, and just yeah. like, you know, yeah. So if you want to, if you want me as a trainer, this is where you should go. If you want me as a photographer, videographer, this is where you should go. <laughs> Something like that. That's great. And and, <laughs> and of course, I'm also like um, actively um, communicating with my friends uh, and also my followers on my social media. You guys can also follow me on my Instagram. I I think most of the time right now, I post a lot of my traveling images, I would say. 
um, because I just got back from my uh, from my recent trip to uh, to Switzerland um, last month. Oh wow! So I'm still in the midst of editing around like I have like almost ten thousand of images that I need to edit, and also around um, I don't know like another seven thousand of clips, video clips that I have to edit. So I'm still in the midst of like finishing the project. So yeah, I've, but at the same time, I'm also quite uh, excited about the project as well to see how it turns out um and also i think on my b hands if i can just like open my b hands uh, over here yeah. um i just minted my first nft also last month uh i minted my switzerland images image oh wow you guys can check out on my um you go to my behance uh web uh profile and you can see we have nft sections of that which is i feel like super cool when behance like literally integrate the whole like wallet thingy into this one page so everybody can see how creators also artists able to you know uh see their work at one place so i was like this is amazing for behance to even like have this, this um, cool. so yeah. you guys can also check out the nft part um on my behance profile yeah i'm curious what happens when you click that i haven't up i have never created an nft but <laughs> what happens if you click it does it take you to like OpenSea or like a wallet or somewhere else or does it just kind of tag it and says it's an nft it's going it's going to like give you like bring you to um where you mint it example here we have OpenSea, uh rareable and also interscan literally yeah, so I you actually can. it links actually directly it. through that's interesting there you go yeah and I, I minted on the foundation actually, but then right. I just realized they also bring whatever that you have on foundation into OpenSea. I was like, what? Uh, I was like, it was like, I don't know, still trying to figure out all of this thing, but I do have my OpenSea icon as well. I do like minted few, but not so much, but I think like I want to make uh, my foundation profile as my mint for my NFT instead of my OpenSea, but we'll see. Maybe I need to, I need to mint more or something. Right. That's like we could. That's like a whole nother stream. We could talk about the whole NFT thing and everything. It's it's so interesting. So many artists coming on and 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 talking about it and dipping their toe in, or they're like fully into that world and everything. But that's that's a whole nother stream. But we'll um we'll leave it at that, which is super cool. You can go and check out um the website there, um and uh, yeah, let us know what you think about NFTs in the chat. I love it. So decisive at the moment. Um, but um but we're here to chat about video editing, um which is great. Yes. You were talking about the courses that you do and the training you do. Um, I, we'll get into it now. I've got some questions around the difference between like corporate training and like training like individuals and stuff. But let's get started. Um, you know, this is this is what you see when you when you open up Premiere Pro. There's been like a couple of changes recently as well, um, which I'm very interested um, to hear your feedback on. Um, and let us know in chat, kind of as as we roll through. But um, but yeah, getting started with the Premiere Pro project where do you premiere pro project that's a tongue twister itself um where do you get started how do we get started today um honestly um i just like uh, updated uh, the latest premiere pro release on my laptop normally i do myself on my workstation but right now um there's something wrong with my internet connection today so i have to like move around um so i, I am on my my laptop right now and the thing that i just realized about the new release uh, on premiere pro is um they finally like uh, releasing the speech to text as you can see when you when you updated your new latest premium but you guys can get to see all of these new features mm. that they just released and I, i've been like uh using this speech to text button uh for my uh caption for a while i think they, they release it in beta and then and now they have like a full function which is like super cool i think um i think in this project that, that we are about to get into i will also use these features as well because we do have and and a voiceover and audio way we have to transcribe the text into a caption so maybe we can get our hands-on into these uh, features uh, later on. And, and then also, I think all of this smogger, the fact that this is also something that I would love to cover, maybe not today, maybe we can cover it on the next session. We have another session on Thursday, uh, where we can like, you know, um, mix a bit of like a uh, Morgard uh, motion graphic templates where we can try to do it in After Effects and export that into uh, motion graphic templates and bring it back into Premiere Pro and try to apply it on our videos, um, that which is so interesting. And, and I think the rest will be um, some basic um, or like casual um, updates from Premiere Pro that uh, that I use most of the time. But I don't really get the chance to use the Premiere Pro production, which is the Frame.io. That one's the new. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah. That was like, really interesting because I did once working uh, in a production company where they used FIM uh, IO as a separate entity where mm. we do feedbacks with our clients and stuff, which is like, oh, this is interesting. And when I heard that Adobe kind of like got that them in into the production, I was like, this is interesting to have that into the software itself. So literally, we don't have to, you know, subscribe to two things. It just like everything is there in one place. I was like super cool. The fact that I think Adobe did a really like great decisions to bring Frame.io into Premiere Pro. Yeah, Frame.io is like beloved, um, like on an enterprise level for, you know, global clients and sharing big video files and multiple rounds of feedback. We actually use Frame.io for all of Adobe Max. Um, last year, uh, which was my first experience using it. I was on the client side though, um, but it was great. It was so much better than what we used to do. Oh, my gosh, like there's no way we could um, do the editing that quick um, and that accurately because like timestamps is like the biggest thing with with editing mm -hmm. and especially when it comes down to nuance and you've got like different different clients with different perspectives and everything like that. It, um, it just works really, really well. So um, it's good, very good for like those professional projects where you might have multiple stakeholders or, or whatever. And it's just easy. Um, in the past, we used to put audit, you know, like put actual files into hard drives and send them in the post because the yeah. files were so big and, uh, you know, yeah. it just took the process way too long. Um, but yeah, no, that's cool. So lots of new features um, to, to check out. Yeah. So I'm just going to start with the Premiere Pro. As you can see, it's like fresh new because I just like updated, um, up updated. So, um, so I have like one very simple project that I just like actually sh finished shooting this yesterday. So it's really recent. I haven't got the chance to see the clips properly yet. So I think this is going to be the first time uh, I'm, I'm seeing it. Um, I mean, I record and, and, and sh I shoot that, that, uh, that project, but then I didn't have the time to edit it yet. So let's just edit this let's do it together let's in do it real together. time. Yes. So whatever you get that you guys are seeing, <laughs> like it's the same thing. Like, I, oh, this is the first time I'm seeing this as well. Awesome. Oh, so, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I hope there's nothing weird coming out from this as well. <laughs> uh, but I can like filter it already. We'll see. So uh, when you create a new project, um, but I think I think if you guys like update to the latest release, like, like last month release, it, it has it has a different kind of um, um, interface for the new project. Mm. If I'm not mistaken, have like any of you on the chat box already like. Um, update your Premiere Pro to the latest version, which is like the latest release, like I think last month release, if I'm not mistaken. Because um, I did it on my um, workstation, on my PC, and it has like very different interface when it comes to new project. It's like the old one, which is most of people like already familiar with it. But the new one was like slightly different. It was like a bit of like um, Lightroom kind. They have like two sections, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like there seems to be a, a, a lot of like um, influence from I think some of the other apps that um, like, yeah. like it's kind of streamlined. It's like okay, what's working over there that people really like, and how can I, like how might that inform some of the UI design for? Um, yeah, the UI design like different. Yeah. So I, I kind of like took some time to get used to it because I'll always use with this um, um, interface. Uh, um, even though I do think this interface is very direct more compared to the latest one, but I like the fact that they have a lot of um, options right away in front of you. Example, you want to create this project or sequence for specific um, output like for YouTube, for Twitter, for Facebook. They have all of that uh, listed in front of you. So you don't have to just like go and browse all of these functions inside of this drop down menu, which is like super cool. I like the fact, I think user all, always like prefer to have something which is like direct and in, in like very like displayed in front of them instead of, you know, have to find out um, all of that inside of few buttons or small buttons or. Yeah. So I'm just gonna <laughs> create the new projects for me. I'm renaming it as a soft time because actually um, the project that, that I, that we're about to edit would be, um, like uh, for a brand and it's actually a Softland brand so I'm just gonna put a Softland names over there and of course you guys can browse through to the directory where you guys want to save it I have a, a extreme uh, SSD connected to this um, um, how do I say um, laptop so this is my uh, file management of a file structure for my project oh, cool. so this is time. like a template 
like that you use all the time. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is like my my go to uh, structure. I always ha- like to have a proper structure that I will always remember by the time that you always. Example after you did hundreds of project using the same structure, right? By the uh, by default, your mind and your brain already like create the mental note on mm. how it's supposed to function. So example, if you're like so exhausted uh, after coming uh, home from the shooting and stuff, and then you have to copy and transfer all of the clips, you don't have to like, you know, think about, okay, what should I rename it? Uh, where should I put it? Because your brain already like programmed to understand and know the structure of your file because you have been doing it for the like 400 times already so yeah. this is like my common like i would say uh for for but for the structure i always have like audio where i put all of the voice over any um i i, I separate like audio and music in two different files of, of course but i don't have a music files right uh, right now so we're gonna find uh, a music later and then put it in a, into a folder over here. So the audio part always will be the one that uh, from the voiceover or any voice recording or audio recording that I got from the clients or, or you know, like anything that I use a separate recorder to just get the audio, not from the camera, uh, directly from the camera. So that will be the folder for the audio. And of course, I have the folder for the clips where I put all the footages over here. And example, if you have like more than one camera, then you can have like clips and then camera one and then camera two and mm. most of the time i will like create a structure like camera one i will rename it an example coming from sony camera or like camera two coming from fuji camera so i like to separate um those folders i don't like to mix it because different cameras have di- different color signs different you know like coding a uh, codex and also uh different um you know like can be like different format as well sometimes like example yeah. i shot using fuji film x4 so uh it was in hlg um hlg lpc lpcm and then um my file will be in dot mov instead of dot mp4 but of course you can change the setting into mp4 but i do prefer to have it in, in mov file because it gives me like more bit depth um right. um it's of like the bit rate of the of the videos and of course the higher your bit uh bit depth of your video you guys can get a better or like higher quality of the videos example if you guys Mm -hmm. like shooting um like 4ks or you guys are shooting in a slow-mo um i think there's a couple of the clips that i did i shot in slow-mo like 120 fps so maybe let's see if the laptop can handle it (laughs) and hopefully we don't (laughs) crash Uh, in this uh, live session, it wouldn't today. it wouldn't be a live stream if we didn't have at least one crash. But we'll see we'll see how we go. We'll see how the laptop holds up. <laughs> yeah, let's see. And then I already create one specific folder for Margaret that I would like to save it for later. Maybe not today, but we're gonna use it for the next session. Uh, maybe inshallah. And then of course, uh, this is just a photos that I'm not gonna use for this video editing. I'm just like put it inside. And project files normally example if I do create something, uh, any animations or like lower third in AE After Effects, I will have one project files in After Effects over here. And then PR will be for project files that we are about to save right now because any project files that, that you create in premiere pro uh it will be in dot pr posh and i will put it inside of these project files pr something like this so I this will it. be the you're so yeah, organized perfect. it's so great <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> uh, so this will be the place where i'm gonna put my project files so i'm just gonna choose here like that and renderer normally it depends on your pc example uh, and in your uh, pc or laptop example i'm using my macbook not m1 just a old macbook uh 2016 i think so this is like the recommended gpu uh that the software selected for me so if you guys have your own gpu recommended by the system then you guys can just pick that one or if you guys feel like it's more reliable to use software only then you guys can also pick this one certain people they don't have the options the first option they only have the second one it's because your gpu is not compatible with the uh, PR version, Premiere Premier Pro version at the moment. It can be because of that. Because I do believe every single time Premiere Pro like update their software, they always try to enhance the user experience. And sometimes it requires more um, advanced GPU to run the software itself. Mm. So example, maybe you need more RAM or you need more like a better system to just run it. So I do understand 
how and why certain people, example, if they are using older laptop, they couldn't select their GPU uh, options over here. It could be because of the software itself couldn't like you know not compatible or tolerate your GPU at the moment. Maybe you yeah. can upgrade your GPU. Yeah. But of course, you don't have to worry. There are always going to be these options. The second one where you guys cannot. It's not like you don't have the right GPU. You cannot run the software. You can, but of course, um, they always going to give you like better options. And if you have these two options, always pick the GPU. Why? Because it's going to accelerate and also like make your render a uh, render rendering process faster. Um, but I sometimes when I do like rendering any project and I got some like error and I don't understand what kind of error it was, I was like, well, what's happening? I thought the, 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 the clips was like, okay. And it turns out there's some error when they are trying to render it. So maybe you can pick software only because it is more reliable, but at the same time, it will take longer time to render. Example, right. if you guys use GPU, it's only can able to render for 10 minutes. But if you guys pick software only, maybe it could up to like one hour. Same project, right? It could be yep. like that. Yeah, I think that's great. That's great. Um, as uh, Johanna said in chat, if um, if you're just tuning in, uh, there's a bunch of people that have just joined us. If you have any questions as we're going along, please feel free to throw them in chat. And a quick shout out to uh, Johanna who's in chat, uh, Vikram as well who says hi, um, to Naj hi. as well, <laughs> um, Amu is in here as well, um, Zafardili as well is in here. Um, so yeah, jump in even if you just uh, even if you just want to say hi while we're hanging out. Um, let's get back to it. <laughs> yeah, throw me some questions. I would love to answer some questions as well. Okay, guys. Um, and I guess that all about the general scratch this. I like to put as a same as project. Um, some people, they have a like specific SSD or hard drive where they put all of these cache or like, you know, scratch this thing where all the temporary files. But I like to stick and put everything that related to that project in that one folder so that it's easier for me to archive it later after i finish the project so uh, all, all of the scratch disk related to this project like all the auto um auto saved auto preview all of that things that happening behind the software when while you are like editing the software i would like to have it in a proper specific folder which is same as where i save my project file so i will put all of this option as uh, same as project like this, everything, everything, like all this motion graphic templates, project auto save, audio preview, video previews, all of it in the same project. That, that would be like my, my always um, settings that I, I, I always use. And I'm not going to switch on this in just setting because I will not be editing any 4K videos right now. And I do not need these options. If you guys like dealing with a uh, bigger or higher quality or high resolutions um, video, you might want to check this one on and enable this in the settings because it's going to like help you to uh, edit the video um, smoother uh, um, if you guys are dealing with the high resolutions um, clips. Okay. Okay. I guess that's all about it you know, when it comes to like setting up a new budget, which is very simple. And if you guys are like uh, in using a Lattice uh, Premiere Pro and with a different kind of interface, uh, you guys can also, I think it's almost the same thing. Uh, but I think there's one option that they added on. They have like a, f a features where you guys can also rename the sequence right away, right? Flynn, if I'm not mistaken. Um, can you, you ask that like, again? Sorry, I missed that bit. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, example, you guys can rename a sequence while you are setting up a new project. I think they have yeah. one options on the right side. You can, yeah. If I'm not missing. Yeah. Like uh, for the older version, uh, you, don't, you don't get the chance to rename the sequence yet. Only renaming the project this is the, re the name for your project, not for your sequence. But then the new one, you guys get the chance to rename it right away, if I'm not mistaken. That's yeah. what I did. You can, yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to press OK and let's see. Um, you know, for this to, to, to switch on screen recording, what's happening? Oh, that would be the Zoom. Oh, cool. It's fast. <laughs> I'm so glad it's fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I kind of like uh, set everything as default right now. So you can see uh, this will be your uh, learning section. And we have a few tabs on, uh, on, on at the top of this Premiere Pro where you guys can pick. Um, example, I'm not going to use the learning part because if you guys like new, you guys want to learn more and feed all of the, watch all of the tutorials that, that Premiere Pro or Adobe has, uh, you guys can click on this learning button and watch all of this. I think this one is already embedded into this Premiere Pro, right? Or is it like going to bring you to the new? 
um, web page. I haven't seen these ones. I think it'll probably, they either do an overlay over the top, so it'll have like action buttons and a little bit of text over the top to kind of, you know, explore the navigation or yeah, or it mm. might export out to like an explanation page where you can kind of learn a little bit more. Yeah, interesting. Because I think every single time they update the new um, update a version, they always come up with the new ways of teaching people on how to use Premiere Pro or like use yourself, yeah. which is like very interesting. Um, but I do enjoy when they have like all of these like tool tips things. Like it's very simple. Like hey, let's get started, and they just like show you here and there where to click. It's like very um, intuitive. Yeah, I think it helps because um, nav navigating through the you know Premiere Pro if you're new can be a little bit daunting. So I think um, that tries to ease that transition a little bit. Interesting. So I'm just going to pick the editing mode because we're going to start edit the videos. And of course, this is like the main um, windows that you guys are able to get to see. I, I always call this like the best five. Um, of course, you have a lot of panels or windows in Premiere Pro, but it's like the most uh, like like important five windows or panel that you always need uh, in order for you to edit the videos. Uh, first, of course, the project um, panel or project window here, the toolbar and also the timeline where you're going to create a sequence and we have the source where you guys are able to preview all of your footages over here and of course the program where you guys can. It works like a monitor, like a, your final display of how your project going to look like in the end. Um, so these are always the five main uh, windows or panel that I always open. Uh, that I use a lot, but of course later we're gonna start adding on a few things such as like the text panel where we're gonna use it for captions and maybe essential graphic, essential um, uh, uh, audio uh, sound, and then you know some of the Lumetri color like all the color grading stuff as well. We're gonna add all the extra panel um, like along the way. So the project of uh, here, I'm just gonna start to import the project or media over here. You, there's a few ways, of course, you guys can, um, you know, import the project. You guys can like simply right click on it and then um, import the project. Why can I right click on it? Wait, it's not coming out. <laughs> oh, it's like a new thing. Oh, or you guys can also import from here. Normally you guys can just go to file and they also have this one is creating a new sequence or new project you guys can create a new over here this one is import i also ways for you to import um any of your uh project from here but i'm just going to do the drag and drop which is the faster way to put your media into your project file but the best thing example if you already have your file structured behind uh, you can always simply just drag it into Premiere Pro and it's, it's always going to follow the structure of your files. So you guys can just simply have like maybe a master file, example, this master file and you bring it in. It's going to create like all this uh, sub bin or like folders according to your structure. So which is very and super convenient. You don't have to do things twice in Premiere Pro and also outside of Premiere Pro. You guys can just like structure everything here and just like bring it into the Premiere Pro. That's great. Um, so, we, did, we did have a question mm -hmm. from Vikram, um, which I might ask. Um, so they have a problem in exporting video, though I don't have mm -hmm. an MPEG format. What to do? MPEG? Yeah, MPEG format. Mm -hmm. What to do? They do don't, they don't have it. One? They don't have it? I thought they have it uh, in, in one of the options. Maybe we can uh, see the export part. Let's try to, after we try to create a sequence and yeah, we try great. to export maybe certain things. We'll get and to see exporting a little bit options. later, Vikram. We'll see if we can have a look. Um, but yeah, you should be able to export as a M MPEG format um, from Premiere yeah. Pro. So we'll, we'll check it out. But also throw some more details in if, um, if we're misunderstanding your question as well. We'll try and tackle it. Yeah. And normally if I don't get to see the codec or certain settings, export settings in Premiere Pro export page, I will try to try to export it using Media Encoder because I exactly. think yeah. Media Encoder has more options. More options, It's yeah. more detailed. It's literally like a software where it's going to help to encode like certain format to certain format. So it's like, it's the best uh, software if you guys don't find specific format that you guys want to export in or to, you know. Yeah, I actually love Media Encoder. It's so great to have if either a file that's just so massively big that you can't do anything with it, you can't upload it or anything like that, and then just trying different methods to get it to be a little bit smaller but still look great, and it feels really, really good when you export it correctly and it just looks perfect. Um, it's actually quite a lot of fun. Um, okay, back to, back to the sequences. Let's check it out. 
Okay, so I'm just uh, after I import this um, media or clips already, I'm just gonna start to uh, create the sequence because without the sequence, you cannot put your clips or any of the assets into your timeline. The timeline works with the sequence. Without it, it will not work. So I'm just gonna go to file and create a new sequence, or you guys can press common uh, end on your keyboard or control end. Um, so for the sequence, I like to use just like a HDV high definition videos and. And you guys can pick example HDV 1080p25. Um, I like to use P progressive instead of interlace because if not, you guys are able to get you know like there's some like a interlacing. I think it works if you guys are shooting in certain camera where they have eye interlace functions. But for my personal settings that I'm using my you know my camera settings, I always just go to progressive. P stands for progressive over here and you guys can pick your um, uh, frame rates like 25, 30 and all but uh, let's just go to the settings um, this one just like from the preset you guys can start from the preset itself and then go to the settings and then you guys can still change your settings from uh, here based on your um, preferences let's see I would like to have so if you don't know, so, so, so something we talk a lot about with video is the best thing to do is to kind of just match to whatever your output is. But if you don't know necessarily what your out, final output might might be, it, this is mm -hmm. a good kind of default to go with 1080, 1080p, um, yeah. 30 frames. Like it's, it's pretty standard, right? So if you're not entirely sure um, and you're doing a project for yourself or just something you might want to upload to YouTube or Facebook or something like that, that's kind of a good you know, boilerplate kind of level, would you say? Yeah, that's true. Because um, this is like a faster way because not everybody understand all of the settings and also export um, codes or like format in the end. So you guys can just like start from here. One thing that I just realized that um, if you guys go to HTV, right, uh, it's almost the same format like that you guys can pick from digital SLR. But the thing is, HTV is like limited into like 30 FPS frame per second so but if you guys example using uh like 50 example i myself in in southeast asia like in malaysia we are using paul so we are shooting mm. in 50 fps instead of 60 so if you guys were using digital slr you start with this one and go example 25 or 30 fps you guys can go to the settings and you guys can still set your time base to like 60 or 50 uh, frame per second uh, but using that HDV preset, you guys wouldn't get these um, options by using the DSLR, digital mm. SLR. You guys yeah. will get to use these um, options. So um, I like to use like 50 sometimes because I do like to have a bit of um, smooth effects in the videos uh, because I'm not shooting like film or like any cinematic videos, just like a really normal video. So I like to have that effect so it's really smooth. So when you watch it on Instagram, it's like a bit you know smooth instead of very jaggy and all so it yeah. depends on your preferences and also depends on your client request certain clients that they have a specific settings like like you have to export it in 25 you have to export it in 24 or 30 fps per, per second so it depends mm. um so i'm just gonna stick with this one and this will be my frame size and because this size will be for real so i'm just gonna have to switch this one instead of 16 ratio 16 by 9 i have to make it 9 by 16. So I'm going to change it into 1080 and then 1920. So then you can see your ratio will automatically change according to the frame size that you guys set. Um, so it's going to be 9 by 16 instead of 16 by 9. And then all of these uh, working color spaces were going to be that color that I uh, should by the way, uh, anyway. So I'm just going to stick it to default. And the rest video preview should be fine. And here, this is like I think one tip that I collect from one of the filmmakers that I think um, they give like share the tips that you can always uncheck these buttons. I never check maximum bit depth or render quality at the beginning of the project. Mm. This is always the settings that I check at the end when I'm about to export that instead of uh, at the beginning of it. The reason why is because um, it's going to, to like exhaust your system while you are editing the video. So I don't want to, I don't have the capability, my system is not there yet to the extent mm. they can just simply render a, a, a small clips in a smooth way with this uh, higher bit depth or higher render quality in real time. Yeah. So I like I think to that's, have I it. I think that's great advice, like, you know, to because you want to work quickly. 
you you know you don't want to be slowed down and sitting there and watching things buffer and you know slowly and you don't want those dreaded crashes either so i think that's good advice yeah it's gonna put on a lot of pressure and stress while working <laughs> so let's just minimize that that's great um so and also by default i know like when you try to set up your sequence they will have this uh composite in linear color check but this is actually going to take up a bit of your power from your gpu as well so as i mentioned gpu is affecting the way you're going to render your clips so if you want to have a like a real-time fast render during the preview you might want to uncheck this one as well because certain effects also will have some error or cannot render in real time because you check this function on so maybe you can untick it first and then um, I don't know, like there are times when I feel like it's my preview was like, stuck or didn't like play smoothly. I would just like uncheck this and it will play smoothly. I don't know. I don't know how to explain in a, in a like, you know, um, technical way, but that's what happened. I think it worked. So yeah. if, if example, if you're like working on something and your, your video didn't like render smoothly, you guys maybe can try to uncheck this and see what happened. Great. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit of trial and error with things like that. Not sure exactly what's going on in the back in the background, <laughs> but let's try it one with and one without. And we'll see what happens. Yeah. So this is a place where you can re rename your sequence. So the name of your sequence will determine the name of your video. I mean, your output. Um, some people like they thought when you rename the project, then that's how your video dot mp4 gonna be uh, the same name as your project no it's a different thing your project is just like a it's a case like a box of where you put all of your stuff in uh so your sequence will be the the final output like example if you want to name it this example like uh so fun real so sorry so this is gonna be the the name for your end video as well so your it's your end video is going to follow the name for your uh from your sequence but of course at the end you can change your your you can rename back your uh, video at the end during the export settings but i'm just telling you like the sequence name will reflect your your video your final output video as well yep it's going to be the same name uh tracks i will leave you by default this is just the numbers of tracks for your video tracks and also audio tracks we are settings i'm not going to touch on that so i guess that's all so let's just try to create our first sequence over here and this is where it is and you can see now in my program you can see my size already changed into a real size instead of in the landscape but it is now in a portrait because we're going to create a real video this time not a like normal landscape video because i know people like enjoy watching reels more nowadays on instagram am i mm. right yeah and instagram's algorithm of course is promoting it so much because it's like TikTok competitor sort of stuff going on so it's definitely uh definitely a bigger focus on instagram for video um and particularly reels i think interesting they keep on pushing that right so people yeah. watch and spend more time on instagram instead I of just think like browsing so. photos yeah i think so um anecdotal um okay. evidence it's not backed up by fact but that seems to be the way things are going. <laughs> understand um so literally like when i was creating the sequence i was already inside of this binning clips the the folder for my clips and when i created the sequence the sequence will, will automatically uh saved into my clips bin as you can see over here so i don't want to have it here because i want to have it more structured so i'm just going to cut this one Control x my sequence and go back to my project uh, and i'm going to create a new bin or like a folder specifically for my sequence uh, because sometimes I'll, I will have like few sequences in one project. It's not like you only can able to create one sequence in one project. Of course, you can have like in one project, you can have like a sequence for your reel, sequence for your IGV, sequence for your, I don't know, like a TikTok video. So you can always save a few versions um, of your videos from the same one project. So I will put my sequence in one sequence bin specifically and I will not mix it with any other folder just like it has to be specifics if not you, you're gonna have like trouble finding it anyway so mm. let's just save the hustle and and you know like speed up your workflow so this is my sequence i already like um moved it into my sequence folder so i'm gonna go back to my clips here and we can start you know um preview our clips over here so this is gonna be i think we did a lot of laughing yesterday so please don't mind all of the <laughs> laughter that you guys about to listen 
<laughs> because it was really enjoy um I, i really enjoyed like shooting this project um yesterday so let's just don't mind me and but there's a way it's not if you like previewing your footages right and then you can hear there's a lot of like uh from your audio meter on the right side there's gonna be um like a green color when you play the videos so they will like um determine your audio coming from that clip example you feel like you do not want to hear the audio while you are like previewing the videos there's a way where you guys can uh, press uh open bracket to lower down the audio while previewing the videos in the source file right okay so open open bracket is it open bracket yeah i think it's open bracket on the keyboard is like to um lower down the audio and also close bracket to to increase the volume back so yeah i think it helps sometimes when we just like want to focus more on the um movement of the videos instead of you know um listening to the audio from the background mm. okay now i don't know what's happening why it's not moving probably because of my video is too big you see there so in the top left hand corner is the preview and usually you'd see the video yes. kind of scrubbing through but something's happening a bit differently yeah it's not it's not scrubbing Let's see other videos. Probably because of my GPU cannot handle this one yet. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, Premier might be saying uh, if we do that, everything's gonna crash. So we're not going crash. to. <laughs> it could be happening. Or maybe let's just like try to drag it into sequence right away and see if we can like show in the monitor. Let's see. We won't play. I'm just gonna save it first before it crashed. <laughs> See, this is why I miss my workstation so much. <laughs> okay, um, maybe we can try to switch it on, like switch off the Premiere Pro first and try to open it back. Yeah, let's do it. If in doubt, turn it off. Turn it back on again. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. Okay, let's just try to do that again. In the meantime, if you guys have any que any question, you guys are free to ask. Yeah, throw them in chat. I remember a question that we had previous. So we've been spending um, the spending oh, the I the month um, focusing on uh, video. I remember one of the things that came up is um, the use of the term bin. So bin is just a folder. Um, that question came up quite a lot. Um, last week, kind of the confusing language and where it all came from, and and you do get this a lot, like with um, particular particular apps. Like um, often you'll come from like Photoshop into Premiere, and you're like, why isn't why aren't the shortcuts the same? I want all the shortcuts across all the apps to be all the same. <laughs> we get this all the time. I say we, like Adobe gets this all the time. And I had the same question. I'm like, why can't the shortcuts exactly the same? Um, and like a lot of things have a little bit of a legacy or a little bit of a history. So. Um, we found out uh, this month on the stream that the bin comes from when they actually had physical bins and they would literally pull all of the um, original audio files out of bin one or bin two or bin three, like in movie production and things like that. And it's just stuck around. Um, it's just continued to stick around. So there you go. Oh, that's okay. how that, that's where it comes from. I don't even know like where the bins come from. I was like, oh, 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 like also like questioning why bin? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know either until uh, Ian Haig, uh, previously this on on this month's video journey, um, gave us the insight into that. I think. Oh, he's still stuck. The but video doesn't want to scrub. See. Yeah, at all. Even though I try to like minimize. Oh, it it it's like slowly. Yeah, let's see. Maybe it works. Because the render bar is in in yellow, meaning it's not. It will not gonna give me any um, jumping or dropping frame unless if you see the random bar in red. Right. So when you're bringing in a, a like um, source file or something like that, and you first pop it in, it's usually red. It has like a very thin but very red like progress bar, and it slowly turns to yellow. And when it shows yellow, that means that you should be able to freely scrub. Premiere's red at all, and it should all be good. Yeah, um, but that's not happening for us today. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea why. It's not like 
Yeah, normally I can just simply just crop it because I usually usually like uh, shooting using the theme settings and you know I don't change setting for my camera as well so I don't know what's happening right now <laughs> maybe oh now it's scrubbing slowly <laughs> okay it's fine I'm just gonna start to like um, arranging the videos because I do have the storyboard for these videos I'm go just going to arrange it based on the storyboard first then maybe I can do the trimming later yeah, absolutely. So we've got about ten minutes. Um, we've got about ten minutes left today, anyway. So we, so on Thursday, we'll we'll fix it all up and we'll make sure that it's all working. Um, but yeah, so we could maybe chat about like bringing the files across. And I'm very interested in the storyboarding. So do you have like a mental storyboard, or do you have like a physical, like a digital storyboard or something? What's your approach? Um, normally, whenever like we shoot for the clients, we already have a brief. Right. And um, certain clients they already give you like a storyboard in a like a visual storyboard, like in, in a sketch or something. Mm. Certain certain clients are gonna give you like in just a paragraph. Like this is the uh, story that, that that we're gonna use, uh, and then this is the outline of of the settings of the videos. Um, so I do work in both example, um, but I do sometimes when I receive a brief from clients, they don't that 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 they don't give any visual storyboard then i would just like create my own storyboard and i just realized there's one software that i just discovered recently called um mind what's the name i think ben ben marriott use it you know like ben yep i know ben marriott um yeah but i can't I think he remember shared in, he shared in his um one of the tutorials and then he was saying that he used this mind leaf if I'm not mistaken, these are one software, sorry, one software that you guys can use to do storyboarding and it really like wonderful and really nice. Let me just try to Google it. I think it's Mindly. Um, I forgot the name. I'm oh, sorry. That's cool. Check Leaf. it out. Um, storyboarding. Let's see. Um, what's the name of it? my mind oh should we just my mind uh like in area let's just check him out <laughs> storyboarding <laughs> i think he did share because i was like he was using one software oh milanot sorry it was milanot sorry yeah this one okay Super interesting. I think um, I have it. You know, I, no, I, I install it in my PC. So you guys can just I like, simply install this, and it's very easy to put and also to put your um, storyboard, which is like super cool because you can just simply drag and drop, and it's super nice as well. Mm. I don't know if you can like watch it here. Yeah. So sometimes when I receive a brief, right, I will just like put the brief inside of this Milan note, and then uh, you get the chance to draw as well. So I'm just gonna scrap, um, sketch it in here, and then you can also put some text. For so example, you can have like the name um, of the scene, scene one, and then this is the VO for that scene, uh, and then this is the visual for that scene. Sometimes I also put some reference. Example, if the clients give, okay, this is the videos, uh, the reference video for this project, so you guys can refer to this one. Uh, so I will just put everything in this Milan note and okay, this project A, this is the brief, this is the reference videos or reference picture, and this is the VO, this is the, the script for that specific scene. So I will have it, everything in this Milan. I think it's really wonderful and I love the UI, it's really chanty, it's really nice, it's so beautiful. Mm. So I like it. That's really so cool. you guys can check this one out. Yeah, it's a lot from Ben Merritt. Like he always like shared a bunch of cool stuff. He and, does. You know, yeah. tips and tricks. Yeah. His you guys should join. Tips. You guys should join his Discord. He always like you know shared a bunch of stuff over there as well. There you go. That's great. Let's see. Yeah. Let's just arrange this video based on story part. So literally, like the scene was how it works. Um, we have an opening scene where we show um, the product and then I pan out into the scene where the talent's with the kid and then I have a bit of close-up shot 
over here it's a bit of close-up shot so this is gonna be the second scene so i'm just gonna arrange it first we have cool. that and you're just clicking that. and clicking and dragging and placing it wherever you want to on the timeline yes but of course if you guys go to this project view i'm just going to expand it you guys can also change this view into free form view if you want Example, if you have a lot of clips, right now I don't have a lot of clips, I only have, I think, like few, like 12 clips, I think. So you can just simply go to Freeform View and you guys can still um, arrange it based on your storyboard because you guys can simply drag and drop like this. So, example. Oh, so you could like visually move it around to where yeah. you want. Yeah, very cool. So this one, maybe. Um, this one, I'm just going to put it down here. I'm just going to make it smaller a bit. It's too big for me. So this is going to be the sequence. Put it here. So there are times when I was like trying to get the idea on how I'm supposed to arrange the clips. I will do this in this freeform view. You guys can get into this project panel. You guys can expand your, your panel by pressing the tilde key or like the warm key on your keyboard. It's going to expand it and press it again. It's going to collapse it. It's a very simple key. Oh, sorry. Wrong panel. I love the name. I love the name you just gave the tilde key. The little worm. The little, the little worm <laughs> key. I've never heard it called that and I love it and I'm going to steal that. It's so cool. It's a worm. It is a little worm. worm. Yeah, because a lot of people it's don't funny. know what the tilde key is. Um, yeah. And so you often have to explain it and I think little worm is perfect. Yeah, normally people always like, oh, the key is like beneath the escape beneath key. Beneath the escape key, yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's little world. It's so <laughs> obvious. That's great. So I'm just going to put it here, make it bigger because I want to see the thumbnail. If, because because if, if you want to like preview in the freeform view without the thumbnail, it's, it's very hard for you to review it. So it's going to be it. Um, this is just like some insert shot, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So this gonna be like some insert shot in between over here. So this is the beginning, this is the end of the videos and some insert at the center. So this is my sequence, how it's gonna be. So example, after you guys already um, arrange your sequence, your, your clips based on your um, storyboard, I would say, you guys can also just drag it right away from here, example. Just gonna make it smaller so this is the one that i already like arranged so example if i'm not gonna like do drag and drop like just now i'm just gonna select all of these no i think it's this one yep select all of these clips that i already arranged it and drag it into my sequence in, and it's going to be in the same order oh, wow. as how you arrange it that is really cool i didn't know that it did that i thought that was just like a visual way to kind of think about it to plan it out but you can actually drag that group across and Premiere will just pop it into one after the other in the same order, even though yours is like, it's not straight lined up and everything. Um, yeah. that, is, that is super cool. Um, we're actually probably going to need to wrap up, I think, before we go on any further today. Um, we've got about a minute or two before, um, before our time is up. So um, thank you so much for today. Thank you for everyone for joining us um, here on Adobe Live. We will be back um to continue up we're going to literally pick up where we left off and um, we'll pick up from yes. this timeline on uh thursday it uh starts at the same time as today started at 1 p.m um, australian eastern standard time which i believe is 11 a.m in malaysia, in malaysia is time. that right so if you're tuning in yes. from malaysia thank you it's great to have you with us um we will be back we'll pick it back up um that made sense uh, on Thursday and we'll hang out. We're hanging out for another hour. So um, thank you, Najiha. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you, yeah. thank uh -huh. you everyone. Bye, everyone. See you on Thursday. Bye.